guys, welcome to HWH Network and you're watching Stories. I'm here with Mitchell Robertson. I almost got it wrong, I said it wrong before. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is a young teenager, 15, and he's making it happen. We're gonna hear about his story before he got involved with business and what he's doing now. So thank you for being on the show. I really appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. I, I love I love the space um, and the whole entrepreneurial um, environment. It's it's exciting and, and that you're 15, you know. So so that's that's awesome. So we're just going to talk a bit about you. Um, so tell me about where you were brought up, uh, what your family life was like, and sort of the journey as a kid. Okay. So I was brought up right here in Brisbane. Yep. Um, and my parents aren't really business savvy at all. So they, my dad works for the Princess Alexandra Hospital and mum works for a psychiatrist. Yeah. So it wasn't really through them that I got interested in business. Mm. Um, then like the real thing that got me interested in business was like from a young age, I've been working with my uh, uncle's landscaping and mowing business. So regularly going out on jobs with him and helping him out there. So how old were you when you were doing that? Oh, um, I started a very, very long time ago, but doing like really simple things that we, my cousin and I, that was my age, called work, but there's probably nothing close to it. Just uh, trying to push a wheelbarrow through. But did you get paid? Yes. Well, then it's work, man. <laughs> How old were you? Uh, I would have been about seven or eight. Seven or eight. That's that's amazing. Seven or eight. That's that's great. And so. Um, how did you get involved with that? Did your friend just say, hey, listen, come join me or? Um, so that was my uncle's business. So yep. he like did work with my um, cousin and he enjoyed it. So I'm like, okay, if he enjoys it, I probably enjoy it. So let's go give it a go. That's cool. That's cool. That's fantastic. And, and so what did you do with the money that you earned there? You just, <laughs> just blew it? <laughs> um, at, to start off with, yes. But then I worked out that saving it was better than blowing it. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so, so if you, um, we're going to get into the journey of what you're actually doing now um, in, in a couple of minutes, but what, what got you interested, what really got you interested in business and, and was that the very first time you made money when you were seven or eight? Yes. So yeah. That would have been the first time, but then when I was about 10 or 11, um, my parents bought like a, a window cleaner. That was one of those electric ones and yeah. i started using that around home and i saw that it was a lot better quality than what like doing it by hand was mm -hmm. because my auntie also had a cleaning business that i worked with yeah and i was doing it by hand there and i saw that by doing it with this machine it was a lot more high quality than you could by hand mm -hmm. so then i started going around as the first informal business to different people's houses and offering to clean their windows and showing them the difference yeah yeah so Tell me about that journey. I mean, you, you pick up uh, this this contraption kind of thing, right? You yeah. see that this is amazing. And um, what's your process, your thought process? You're just gonna go out in the street, knock on doors and just, hey, this is how much I'll charge you. How did, how did that happen? So basically it was, at that time I wanted to buy an iPad. Yep. And <laughs> I needed money for it. So yep. I saw that, okay, well, this is working well for us. My parents really like it. So more families are probably going to like it as well. So I started going out and talking to different people about what they thought about it, how much um, they think I should charge and that kind of thing. Mm. And then eventually I reached a price and then started going knocking on doors and contacting relatives and friends and everything like that. And then started doing jobs for them and yeah. made a little bit of money. And I got my iPad. That's, that's great. Did you stop when you got your iPad or did you continue? I continued going for a bit, but then after doing it, a lot of the people saw that they really liked the machine, so they went and bought their own. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> kind of stopped me in my uh, foot tracks there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Um, so, how many clients did you have? And were they, did they become regular or? Um, some of them were regular, others were went away and bought the machine after the first time I did it because they liked it. <laughs> um, but I would have had about 20, something like that. Yep. Um, but then only a couple of them would have been regular. Mm, mm. Now, what would you, what, what was the lesson, I guess, um, that you learned out of that process of knocking on doors, putting yourself out there? That um, you could uh, you could do a lot with what you have and yep. you can, as long as you follow a goal or a set process that you could get to wherever you want to go. Mm, mm. So what would your advice be, um, your advice be for um, someone who's 
I guess the same age as you or younger than you that wants to go out and they they scared and I don't know what what thought pro what what do you actually thought were you scared when you were like knocking on doors because I think some people think that oh some people just have it and they they don't freak out about things like that yeah so it would be like to just try because the worst thing they can say is no and that's not going to put you any further back than when when you were when you started mm. did but you get a couple of no's yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> and being that age yeah it might have cried a couple of times but it uh, teaches you things but i wasn't any further back then when i started yeah because yeah i i didn't lose money i didn't gain money so mm. i was still in the exact same place i just had to go into another door and try again mm. and the best part was if someone said yes then i, I made money and i got a step closer to getting my ipad <laughs> that's fantastic that's great hey guys you're watching hwh network and this is stories we'll be right back after this break <laughs> Welcome back, this is HWH Network and you're watching Stories. We're here with Mitchell and we are talking about teen entrepreneurs. Very exciting. Um, so we were talking about that particular business you just, I guess you did, which was really, really cool and really exciting. Um, what was the stage from that? After you finished doing that, you um, sort of, all your clients went out and bought their own things. Um, what did you go into? What what? At that point, I went back to doing more jobs with my um, uncle's landscaping and mowing business yeah. and then to my auntie's um, cleaning business to, to just keep working with them. Mm. Um, and then it wasn't until last year when I started this, this business that I'm doing right now. Okay. Did you start this business, which we're going to get into in a second, um, through a school project, out of school project? How did this sort of come about? Tell me, tell me the basically the step by step what happened. Okay, so at school last year there was a class called Academy of Ideas. Yep. Where for the assessment we were projected fifty years into future Brisbane, mm. and we had to come up with eight to sixteen problems that we thought would be at large in future Brisbane, and then we would choose an underlying problem, which is one that we were most passionate about or thought we could solve easily. Yep. Um, and then we would come up with eight to sixteen solutions to that chosen problem. So I chose identity theft as my problem and then um, digital identification as my solution man that is that is unreal like it's taking me back to school right so when i was in school we did we did a similar thing it wasn't named the same um it was actually really a tech class um tech not technology studies woodwork metalworks and we had the same thing where they gave us you say find a problem and find a solution but the fact that they says look in 50 years time really bands your it pushes you beyond sort of just you know your local sort of i think most of the guys at school in my my school just did things around the school or yeah. around their house but that was really challenging you guys yeah because then you got to think about well what is the potential for problems in the future mm. and how can we solve them with a future mindset as well yeah because it was yeah. like based around future problem solving and uh with the incorporation of a bit of philosophy yeah yeah and then from there, I um, pivoted it and worked out that I could make it into a business. Mm. Um, but I wanted to get access to the government's database. To make, uh, <laughs> Don't tell me you hacked. <laughs> to, to make uh, digital IDs. Yeah. But there was no way in hell I was getting access to the government's database. So it was either pivot the business from the that idea of having a digital ID mm -hmm. um, or completely ditch it. So I yeah. just pivoted it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I'm at now. Yeah. So, so, so you took that and um, you you present. Did you have to present something to the class? And at that stage, it was just an idea. Yeah. At that stage, we had to um, pitch our whole problem mm -hmm. to the class and why we thought it would be a problem, and then we would pitch our solution as, along with that as well to the class. Yeah. And, and it was just an idea at that time. Yeah. And what did the teachers? What what mark, what mark did you get on that? Oh, an A or an A plus. I don't oh, remember. fantastic. And. Um, was the other students in your class um, as engaged with their assignments? Did they do well as well? Yes, um, most people in the class would have gotten uh, an A. I don't think anyone got lower than an A minus. Okay, so they're all into it, eh? Yeah. Yeah, so, that's, um, that's great. Some of the other ones, like he, his uncle's like quadriplegic, so 
um, they have to regularly like stretch their fingers and they mm. get physios or people to do that for them, but they don't really like people touching them. So he uh, came up with the concept for a device to do all of that without anyone touching your hand. Yeah, wow, wow. So, is he running a, he's developed it into a sort of a, a business that's possible? Yeah, so he's got a prototype at the moment, and but he's over in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> This is crazy. I love it, man. It's so good. <laughs> cool, cool. So, um, so you finished that. You did the assignment. You you, you did really well. And um, how did you take it from an idea to to actually being something? I mean, you said your mother and father aren't really into business. So, who did you go to? Did yeah. Um, so the first person I went to is my friend's dad. So he's a um, business person yeah. and has been for quite some time and he's got multiple businesses that he's run mm. and he's also an angel investor so i took it to him to see what he thought of it and to, to pitch it to him yeah and uh, he, he liked it so and, um, so were you freaking out when you're doing this i mean or <laughs> not really as such because i was really comfortable around him okay cool, cool um but after him uh, saying that he thought it was a good idea i then i got in contact with microsoft Mm -hmm. in the Brisbane office and then I went there and pitched it to the innovation guys there yep. and then I got access to their facilities and a mentor there which what, was pretty cool. What gave you the idea to approach Microsoft? Um, like, did you just think let's just approach them? <laughs> so mainly because at that time Apple Pay and Samsung Pay had just been had just come out yeah so by having like a digital identification app you don't necessarily want to go to either Apple or Samsung mm. and Microsoft had a uh, quite a large reach amongst everyone um, so by going to them if I was to get help and support from them they would, they would have then been able to push it out quite easily but that obviously didn't happen but I just got a mentor which was still really useful and that was definitely uh, a good step for me because I got to learn more about business and every and entrepreneurship from them there at Microsoft yeah yeah so tell me tell me about what you're doing now so so for those that are listening um what is your product and what are you doing so basically it is a digital identification app for when you go out to like a bar or a pub or a club and it stores a scanning copy of your driver's license in the cloud and then that's associated to a qr code so then that qr code is displayed on your app on your phone so then when you go to the venue, a bouncer has a different version of the app, which yep. is linked into all of the government stuff that it needs to be and all of our databases in the cloud. And then they scan that QR code and then it, it like authenticates you to see whether everything is the way it should be and then lets you in a lot quicker than it does now and allows anonymous data to be collected. That's really cool. That's cool. So when I, let's say I go to a club, right? And uh, I scan, is it a scan phone or how does it, yeah, so how does it pick it up? It'll be a QR code on your phone. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So um, it sort of scans it, yeah? Yeah, so that'll be to start off with. Down the track, I want to bring it into NFC chips. So, mm -hmm. you know how you've got like PayWave on your credit card? Yeah. Just tap it. So then it'll be the same thing on your phone. But the, the issue is Apple has their NFC chips locked. So oh. then you get unlocked, which is oh. a bit of a struggle. But it is a bit of a pain, eh? Yeah, but Android is good. They're unlocked. Oh, well, just tell everyone to buy Android. <laughs> what phone do you have? Do you have Android or Apple? I have Apple. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I have both. Okay. Yeah. Which one do you prefer? Apple. Okay. <laughs> um, that, that's that's really cool. So if I went into a club, right, and um, they scanned that they scanned the thing, and um, and I came up um, saying, what would it say if I was a bad person? Would it give a warning or? Yeah. So basically, the OLGR, which is the Office of Gaming and Liquor Regulation, they have a, a database of um, people that are banned. So then, mm. as soon as that person's name and date of birth, birth is recognised in that database then it comes up to that venue, wherever they are, if they've been banned by another venue, saying that this person has been banned at this venue, and then it's up to that venue as to whether they let that person in or not. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's really, because at the moment, they don't know. Um, some, in some cases they do, but yeah. in other cases they don't. Because yeah. of the new the new laws, um, it's becoming more popular for them to know. Okay. But um, there's some cases where they don't. Yeah, but yeah. it'll be good because at the moment the current scanners are really expensive for venues. So venues that aren't required by law to have the scanners, they won't have them. So there's less yeah. venues that are all interlinked into a database mm. and everything like that. But whereas for mine, I'll be making them a lot cheaper. Yeah. So then more venues that don't actually have to have them will have them. Yeah. Like the other day, I signed up um, a venue that isn't in the safe night precinct, but will be using the scanner mm. because at the moment the venues that aren't in safe night precincts, the bouncers are just like looking. Uh, the idea to see whether it 
has all of the things and there's always possibility for human error and everything. So yeah. that takes an amount of time and the software that I have will be able to make it a bit quicker than what the bouncers do. Mm. And then you're also allowing for all the data to be collected and being interlinked into all of the databases to check and keep your venue a lot safer. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Um, well, it's, I don't know if I love it. It's crazy that you're involved in a space that is clubs and and all this stuff but you're underage yeah and so. it's it's like an irony you know it's it's great <laughs> yeah, it's pretty weird I, like i've got this software to be used at like bars and nightclubs and stuff and i can't actually go out myself <laughs> it's so good it's so good okay listen man i'm gonna wrap up just um in a couple of minutes um i've got a question for you because you are mill millennial i can't even pronounce it properly, millennial, Men mel, mel, you know what I'm saying, millennial. that's the one, I need to say it more often, um, a lot of people, a lot of older people um, see that age bracket as um, a generation that don't have drive, don't have passion, don't want to work, um, just want to be in front of a, a phone and stuff, what is your response to that as, as one of those generation? So some people are like that, but that's just because they haven't been really shown what they can do if they put their mind to something. Yeah. Like for me, like starting a business at my age is, is difficult and it requires a lot of work and a lot of time, mm -hmm. but there's people like myself and my age that are doing it and are getting results from doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And they're doing the exact same thing anyone that is 30 or 40 is doing, but at a younger age. Mm -hmm. so, so your generation, um does have drive does have um what is the word i'm looking for drive uh, excitement um, i mean they would be they would be dedicated to a cause um but what you're saying is a lot of them don't have hope they don't know that that's possible yeah so at the moment they're they're just like oh, okay this is my phone this is social media this is what i do as soon as i get home some of them will go home onto their computers and play games but if they get shown an opportunity or given an opportunity, mm. then they're going to put their mind to it and, and actually try to work hard in it. Because like some people work hard at school because they want to get good grades and yeah. get a job that they want to do. Others don't care because they don't know, they don't really understand what the purpose of it mm. is. They, mm. they see it as a waste of time. But by giving them an opportunity, showing them what they can achieve by putting, uh, by having drive, by putting their mind to doing something, they'll actually get somewhere and I reckon as they get a little bit older within the next few years, they'll see that. Mm. So so really from, from the older generations, we should be looking and saying, instead of turning around saying, oh, they just spend time on the phone and they just waste some time and they're not uh, passionate about anything, is turning around saying, wait, we need to actually look and say, maybe they just do that because that's all they know and they don't know anything else. Exactly. Yeah. So like if someone's passionate about a sport, like uh, say you're passionate about swimming, like lots of people, they will get up my age at about five o'clock to go to swimming training mm. in the morning and then they'll go to school and then they'll do swimming training yeah. again in the afternoon mm. because that's what they're passionate about and that's what they want to do. So yeah. Yeah. if everyone was to do that for any sport, anything they want to do and at this age, then that, that um, like stereotype would be wiped out. See, I've got this. I've got this viewpoint, and um, I'll see if you agree with me or not. But I think that a lot of people say you need to be passionate, go do what you're passionate about. And I went through this journey as well. And I was, I've been passionate about all sorts of things. And then there was a stage in my life where I had no passion. I wasn't involved in anything, but I had no passion. It's like, oh, I must go do something that I'm passionate about. So I believe that you can't be passionate about something if you're not involved in it. Yeah. Um, like all those people who wake up in the morning and they're passionate about going to swimming, it's because they're doing it and that's why they're passionate. So I think doing something, you can become passionate about it. If you don't do anything, you can't be passionate about anything. Exactly. Because if you're not doing something, you don't know what the potential for. You may like it, you may not, but mm. if you don't do it, you don't know. No, that's great. So last last question here for me is um, if if other people do you do speaking gigs? Do you go and speak on stage to to groups and people? And um, I haven't really done too much of that as of yet, but I will be looking into doing a bit more of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, not a problem. That sounds that's that sounds really good. Really exciting because you know you'll be surprised how many people would want to see someone like you on stage and be like, man, I. I 
we can all learn from you and it's amazing because you're doing it you know and there's there's people three times as old as you that wants to do it and and just doesn't do anything so so that's really exciting how does people find you um follow you you know your journey what where do they go okay so i have instagram and facebook so yep. um, then I'm, i also have a business page on instagram and facebook as well so um, i'll be able to give that link to you yep um or the username and stuff yeah no that's cool and i'll just i'll just put onto the um onto the video get that done and then people can just can see it um, sure. so make sure you follow this guy on on facebook uh instagram and uh twitter is that right twitter yeah. yep um you can find him on linkedin as well and his business page and what is your business called it's called idu identification there you go you've got it guys all right um really really appreciate you um speaking with me i had to come out here to to him because he's too young to drive <laughs> so uh with, but but it's great it's such a it's such a privilege to be able to come out and have an interview with you and talk to you about uh, your journey and what and what's been happening and i look forward to seeing you know what what's to come so um what is to come before we go <laughs> um so at the moment i'm in the process of signing as many lois which letter yeah. of intent with venues so then that shows the interest to investors mm. so i'm currently seeking an investment to secure the final software so then it can be launched uh, sometime next year oh very exciting very yeah. exciting awesome guys uh this is hwh network and you're watching stories until next time keep it real see ya